Hello, everyone. This is Vincent Pacello, host of the MSU WMA podcast. We have another amazing episode planned for you today. We recently hosted Andy Hill. Andy is an award-winning family finance coach, MSU alum, and the host of the top-rated podcast, Marriage, Kids, and Money. He's also been featured on many major media outlets, such as CNBC, Market Watch, NBC News, and Business Insider. In today's conversation, we talked about Andy's journey into financial freedom, how he got into creating content, how he runs his podcast, along with so much more. So stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the MSU WMA podcast. I am here with Andy Hill. Andy, thanks so much for being on. Thanks for having me, Vincent. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. So let's just dive into this um, and talk about how you got to where you are today. So talk us a little bit about um, your financial journey and kind of how you got to where you are today. Sure. Yeah. So today I am the host of an award-winning podcast called Marriage, Kids, and Money. It's focused on helping young families build wealth. And how I got here is that I was a young guy, a young family guy, and I'm like, I have no idea how to help my family get to the next level. I was married with my wife in my late 20s. We were making good money. We were making like $130,000 combined. It was awesome. We had more money coming in than we knew what to do with. So we were partying, having good times, going out, you know, going on vacations. And then all of a sudden we learned that we were going to be parents and something clicked in my brain where it was like, okay, I'm not just living for myself. I'm not just living for our partying and having a good time. I We're physically bringing a human into this world and I need to be prepared and ready. So it was at that time that I started to pay attention to my finances a little bit more instead of living paycheck to paycheck and having a lot of fun. I was saying, Uncle, what can I do to give my daughter a great life? And things Mm -hmm. like saving for college came up, paying off our student loans, paying off our car loans, you know, investing for the future. These started to pop up into my brain being like, okay, I've heard that I'm supposed to do these things for a really long time, and I just haven't really, you know, done it, uh, you know, to the full extent. So right around that time, um, I started to pay attention to my finance a little bit more and kind of got a little bit of addicted, you know, one thing after another, we'd hit these financial goals and they started to snowball. And, you know, 15 years after I started my career, I decided just to make it my full-time thing uh, as a podcast host and a family finance coach for other families trying to do the same thing. So that's, that's what I've been up to. I love that. And we'll get into the podcast bit in a little bit, but why was financial independence so important for you personally? Like you kind of yeah. touched on that a little bit, but I would love to kind of get more in depth on that. Absolutely. Yeah. For me, I'll be honest with you. It was, it was me choosing a career path that I just had lost passion on. Mm-hmm. And it was one of those things where it became overwhelming for me. I uh, started off my career in event marketing and I was in my twenties and I really liked it. I was traveling around and things were cool and I got to try new cities and new experiences. And then over the decades after I got married and I started to have kids, traveling around the country and, you know, working on the weekends became not as exciting for me. So I said, oh, well, you know, I I want to transition out of this, but I felt stuck at that point. I said, well, I've sort of pigeonholed myself into this position and I'm making good money and I can't really just jump out of it. So financial independence for me became, well, what can I do to do some crazy financial goals in order for me to not be in this position where I need my career, I need this income, or I need to be in this industry. And so for me, that became, well, what can I do to eliminate my debt? What can I do to eliminate my mortgage? What can I do to invest early and often so that we have a nest egg that helps us get to a level where we don't need to worry about investing as much anymore? And what can we do to, to, to build up our, wor- our net worth to over a million bucks? And we'll just you know, feel a little bit more comfortable with our finances so that we can make some choices around our careers, uh, specifically mine, uh, where I wouldn't feel so stressed and pressured to work somewhere that I really didn't have a lot of passion for it anymore. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. So how, um, so you are a graduate of Michigan State. You graduated yes. in communications. Um, how did your journey at MSU help you to where you are today? Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely loved my time at Michigan State. 
I, I wish I would have stayed longer. I, I only did three and a half years there, but I um, went through the communication school, uh, really enjoyed the connections I made, and just overall just experiencing all that Michigan State had to offer. Um, I think that it prepared me well by giving me a broad perspective on a bunch of different areas that I can learn. And that's really what I did. I went through the communication school, studied a lot of different areas within communication, advertising, marketing, even right. dabbled in business a little bit as well. Um, but by the time I graduated, I had already had a couple of summers of internships that gave me that real world experience as well. So I really enjoyed the the learning aspects of school, but really what I got most out of, uh, you know, preparing me for the work world was actually being in the work world. So yeah. I had a couple summers of internships that helped me understand more about the marketing side of things, more about the advertising side of things, event marketing. So I kind of got the feel, they got the education and they also got the feel for what working really was. So by the time I graduated at 22, I was ready for, I was ready for the work world. So yeah, it was, it was a good time. I love that. So you, you talked about how you worked in marketing and all that kind of stuff. I'm actually a marketing major myself. A lot of people awesome. are, get, get really flustered when they say I'm a marketing major because they think that I'm the wealth management guy, the finance guy. But <laughs> in reality, I'm actually taking marketing and uh, wealth management. I'm studying both. So I'm, I'm getting the best of both worlds, I tell people. So um, how would you say marketing helps with your podcasting and like reaching out to people oh, and all yeah. that kind of stuff? Absolutely. Um, I would say... Mar when you're when you're marketing you're you're telling a story you're telling a story about who you are you're telling a story about what your product is you're telling a story about why people should even care yeah. so without marketing without advertising without communication um, you you might have something really great you might have a really great service you might have a really great product but nobody knows about it and nobody yeah. cares either because you haven't convinced them uh, or talked to them about the story about why they should care what's the reason that your product or service exists. Mm -hmm. And what problem are you trying to solve with that? And communicating that through an engaging story, I've found to be a really great way, even as a consumer, I've, I find that I'm more convinced as a consumer when I've been, I don't know, uh, told a story, an interesting right. story, told something that has, I don't know, given me reason to care because there are thousands and thousands of products and services out there and plenty of people trying to get a hold of your attention. But I feel like the compelling story is really the way to come across to people. And that's, uh, that's, that's one reason that I like marketing. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Cause I, I tell everyone, especially as like future financial advisors that you can really gain a lot out of learning a marketing class, maybe a few marketing classes. I feel like it's like, it's very, very beneficial. And I feel like people would really benefit from it. So absolutely yeah. cool. So how did you get into podcasting and creating content? How did sure. that whole story start? Yeah. So uh, my, my, my journey of my career continued. I, I worked from 22 to, you know, my mid thirties. And then one day as a young dad, I kind of really had kind of a bad day at work. It was yeah. like, okay, we had new management, new management came in and said, Hey, all that, all that, uh, the team that you built, those three people that are reporting to you, they're not reporting to you anymore. And you're now on this new team and you're going to have this new job. And they didn't really ask me about it. And I had done really great work up until that point. I've sold millions and millions of dollars of stuff for them and made them very happy, made them lots of money. But then there was no really reciprocal respect where it said, Hey, you know, we're making these changes. And what do you think about these changes are? How do you want to be a part of it? It was just, nope, the decision was made for me. So at that point I said, wow, I really have no control of my destiny and somebody yeah. else does. I want to have a little more control because right now I don't. I have a job that commands most of my time. And then when I come home, I have parent duties that command most of my time. So Andy's not really in control much here. So I felt like I wanted to grab a little bit more control of my life. So I said, well, why don't I start with a hobby? So I decided to uh, start a podcast as a hobby to have conversations like you are, where you just want to engage with people, learn more about what's going on and, and educate yourself. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to learn more about how to be a better dad. I wanted to learn how to be uh, better with my money and then you know create a great life for my family. So I started the podcast called Marriage, Kids and Money. 
and started it as a hobby. And then shortly after that, uh, you know, continuing it for about a year or two, just enjoying it, some companies started to contact me and say, "Hey, can I sponsor your show?" And I said, "What? What? You, you're gonna? What do you want to give me? You're gonna give me money to talk about the stuff that I was gonna talk about anyway?" Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, so it started to snowball from there. It went from a hobby to a side hustle, and then eventually in late 2019 my wife and i were like hey you've you've done so well with the with the podcast and, and with your financial journey why don't you just take a leap and go for it and see how it goes give it your full go and i was nervous to do that but with my wife's blessing i'm like sure I'm, yeah. i would love to do that i'm not into this career anymore and hey even if it doesn't work out uh, at least some something i gave a gave it a try you know so I, I ended up doing that i ended up leaving um my corporate career after 15 years uh in early 2020 and uh through pandemics and variants yeah. i'm still standing uh two I years it. later it, it's been ups and downs but uh but things are going really well with the business good that's awesome so um there's this really cool thing that i love about your podcast is i believe it's called bread and wine correct oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so so how did I, I i've watched a, a few episodes of that and i really enjoy it but how did that idea come up yeah, you know, so I had been doing the show for a few years and every 50 episodes I would invite my family just as a reminder myself as well as the audience that family comes first for me and that's the message I'm trying to espouse. Um, right. So after a while, my wife's like, well, you know, I think maybe we should do a segment together, but I don't want to talk about any of that money stuff. You know, you just talk about money too much and let's talk about like family and life and just stuff that's going on. I said, sure. And uh, so she was the creative idea around it. So every Friday, my wife and I, uh, get together and we have a glass of wine and then we just talk about family life and money and whatever pops up. And it's been a really great conversation because people have really enjoyed it. Sometimes I get messages from people who are like, Hey, that's the only segment you should do. You should skip, skip the Monday segment. Like, hey, hey, I've been, at, I've been at this thing for a while. Let me, let me give it a shot. But no, really, right. I think that they like the, the real casual raw conversation between a husband and a wife about what's going on in their lives. And, um, it's been really something that's been great. We've been doing it about a year and a half now. We got uh, nominated for an award for uh, family finance content for that segment specifically. So Love it. Uh, life's, life's been good lately. That's great. That's wonderful. So what would you say um, when it comes to making content, would you say that it's for everyone? Um, I don't think that you need to make content to be successful in whatever your venture is, uh, depending on your, your service or product that you're providing. Uh, but I do think it helps. I do think mm -hmm. it goes back to that conversation we had about creating a, a, an interesting story. And uh, a lot of people are enjoying things like podcasts or YouTube channels or, or social media. So if you want to get your message out there, I mean, it's one thing to create a really cool product. That's, let's like, like think from like an engineering student mindset, yeah. right? This product is perfect. It moves perfectly. It, it works exactly how people are going to need it. But if you're not convincing them with a story or some interesting marketing, uh, they're never going to find it. So right. I think creating content helps with that. Uh, do you need it to be successful? No. I think sometimes from a business standpoint, I put the content creation too too far in the forefront and nothing on the product development or service side. Right. And I'm like, wait a second, how come I'm not making any money? You know, cause I, there's a balance to it, right? You can't just keep, keep promoting and creating content, even though it's a lot of fun, you still have to uh, have some sort of business backing of it. What are you selling? What service are you providing or what products are you, you putting out there? Or is this an advertising medium? So I think uh, having a balance of, creating content that brings people into your personality and your story, as well as having a compelling service or product in the back end, uh, seems to be the, the, the magic touch. Yeah, no, I, I love it. So what would you say is your preferred social media outlet to kind of, you know, expand your message with? Uh, well, for my demographic, which is sort of in this, call it, you know, 30s, 40s, young parent demographic. Instagram has been fantastic for that. Mm -hmm. um, I also create content for other brands uh, and they are in more of a younger demographic. So I have been heavily involved in the TikTok world yeah. over the past couple of years. I make uh, short form videos for um, a brand called The College Investor, which helps um, you know young people get on their investing journey. So I create goofy stuff on there a lot. Um, but yeah, I would say 
depends on who you're talking to. So there might gotcha. be even something that I don't even know about that you probably know about that's uh, even more fun and uh, uh, and youthful than than TikTok. But TikTok might be the might be the huge platform. Even in 2021, I had heard that it was the most visited site above Google. Uh, which which blew it's my mind. insane to me yeah it's just so <laughs> wild how tiktok yeah. can get to that point so yeah i mean i think there's sort of a there's a weird thing going on with short form video that people just want some quick bites of information and maybe that is sort of i i, I liken it to like a billboard on the highway right it's right. like okay i saw it for three seconds oh that's interesting let me dive deeper for more information so we found that to be a, a good strategy where it's like hey whatever goofy thing you do on TikTok or Instagram reels, but then you go deeper for more in the description or back to your website. So it's sort of a, a marketing way to bring people into your message. So right. whether that's, Hey, come listen to my show or, Hey, I've got this article on this or, Hey, here, I've got this great product. Oh, okay. That, that, that goofy thing or that, that thing that caught my attention now brings me into the, the broader product. No, that makes sense. And I also read an article a few days ago about how TikTok kind of distributes their content based on sample sizes. And it's just mm. so interesting. We're interesting. just going into that. Yeah. Um, which is why like if like with the sample sizes, if you go to a smaller audience, um, then it will it'll go to your followers. But then if those people like it, then it'll go to bigger, bigger sizes. It just kind of oh. like goes up into that. So it's really interesting stuff. But um, so from the podcast, whether it was money or parenting or whatever that might be. What's like the biggest hack you've learned that not enough people give credit to? Oh, interesting. Um, I would just say generally the power of automation. I would mm. just say creating small, repeatable habits, whether that is with parenting or marriage or money. Right. Uh, since we're talking about wealth management here, I would say a lot of uh, you know on the money side, creating those small, repeatable habits that you can do on a daily basis. And if you can even take your hands off of them, that is fantastic. So for example, um, I'll call it my workplace 401k at yeah. work. You know, I, I signed up, I was making a good amount of money. I signed up to say, hey, I want to take advantage of the, the employer match here. And I'm just going to put it on autopilot. I'm going to try to max it out because I'm making good money and I want to save a lot of it. Right. I stepped back. I essentially just bought the, the S&P 500 index fund and said, okay, I'm going to see what happens over the next seven years. I look back and yes, we had a good, good market over those seven years, 2013 to 2020. Right. And had $200,000 when I left, when I left the company, those just little tiny things where you say, I'm going to choose to do this and put my hands off of it and not pay it, you know, not you know, mess with it too much can be so much, um, so powerful in the world of building wealth or just anything that you want to do and change. I, I heard a statistic, which I'm sure I will, I will butcher, um, that Fidelity did that's, that compared active investors versus investors who are dead, um, that just left their, <laughs> left their things. Uh, they found that more dead investors did bed, better than active investors because they physically just did not touch their money. So wow. the power of automations and just letting things go uh, is powerful, which seems so counterintuitive to all the things that we need to learn or do or figure out options, trading, single stock, buying crypto, whatever. It's like just buying the market and letting it grow and not touching it yep. proves to be one of the most powerful tools. Totally agree. That's awesome. So what would you say is the most interesting part of wealth management or like personal finance? Like just based on who you've talked to and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. I mean, I would say the ability to craft the life you've always wanted. You yeah. Know, whether it's whether it's the background that you've come from or or you maybe you're really proud of the background you came from and you wanna honor what your family has done for you by strengthening your family tree. I think that's so exciting to say that the, the options are are limitless. And when you grab control of your money and say, here's what I want to do. And here's the goal that I want to have for me or my family. Uh, it's, it's very incredible. It's very powerful that you can craft your future. And yes, everybody has different backgrounds and comes from different places. But if you set up those goals, so they don't seem so overwhelming, like in the beginning, let's say you've got a hundred thousand dollars of student debt that you went through to get yeah. this degree and it's going to be, man, I got to jump into that. Okay. Take it one step at a time. What can you do to crush ten thousand dollars of that in your first year at when you when you get your job, and then then snowball it from there. Oh wow, you're eventually student debt free. Okay, now what what's another big goal? How do I keep investing? How do I grow my acumen there? 
I think when we when we look at these big numbers or big things online, being like, okay, this person became, you know, a millionaire at 35, and it's like, oh man, that's depressing. You know, I don't. Yeah. I, there's no way I can do that. Don't compare yourself to other people. Just compare yourself to where you were yesterday, right. and try to build up from there. So those lessons have been very powerful for me, especially when I get, you know, uh, jealous of people I see online or, yeah. or seeing where they are. I think I try to bring it back to myself and be like, okay, what can I do to improve from where I am today? Right, exactly. And also what tools help you to get there to craft yes. the personal finance life that you've always wanted to achieve? Oh, I would just say um, utilizing things as simple as crafting your own personal budget mm -hmm. and then living and honoring that and saying, hey, here's where my goals are and here's where I want to go. What do I have coming in? Where is it going? And making sure that I'm staying honored to that. And there's lots of free apps out there. We love Mint. Mint's been uh, a yeah, fantastic Intuit tool for a really long time. And then there's just other great fintech tools and fintech partners out there, you know, keeping your uh, investments uh, low cost and simple. We love Vanguard. M1 Finance is a great mm -hmm. tool. Uh, the tools like this make the managing your money side really easy and then the growing your wealth side really easy too so working with great trusted partners like that has been very helpful and really quick sidebar with the budget when it comes to budgeting how do you enjoy your money in the moment but also save your money for later so they give the balance of both like what's the best advice that you have to achieve that yeah i would say you use the word uh vincent i would say it's balance because if you say I i'm gonna do a i'm gonna save all of my money that that's not fun you know no. like but and like i'm gonna spend all of my money okay that's that's fun <laughs> that could be fun but it's not as responsible so you know what can you do to take a portion of your money and say i'm always gonna invest this amount maybe that's 10 percent, or maybe that's 20 percent, and then also in the same sense I'm always going to have fun. I'm always going to make yeah. fun a, a big portion of my life. So for our family right now, a big part of that is vacation. So we allocate 10% of our money every year to going on fun vacations. Nice. Because that's where we are in our lives right now. So it's not all about just saving and investing. It's about making sure you plan for the things that you find important in your life. So that's the cool thing about the budget. You craft what life you want to have. Right. You don't have to say, oh, well, this guy says I need to do this. I need to save 70% of my, oh, that, <laughs> is that fun though? I mean, are you going to like hate your life in like two years right. and be like, well, what, I'm saving for what? So I would say save and invest with purpose. Don't just save to have the largest pile of money at the end of the road, because if you didn't enjoy your life and you died with 5 million bucks, how, how I don't know. How fun was that? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Awesome. So who who are your heroes or people that you follow that have really inspired you over the years? Uh, let's see. Well, I, I really enjoy uh, a great book that I recently read was called um, Die With Zero. Uh, it's kind of almost just what we just talked about a little bit yeah. of having that balance. Uh, it was by a great uh, writer named Bill Perkins. And he talks about how people can get so into this saving and investing track. And maybe some people who might be listening to a wealth management podcast yeah. might feel that where it's like, oh, wow, I've learned this hack of secret that I, if I save a bulk of my uh, income each month and invest that, I'm going to be a millionaire, multimillionaire by the time I'm 60. And there, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a really smart way to go. But for the people who might be listening to a wealth management podcast, it's also important to allocate time for fun, for experiences, for enjoying life, for making sure that you're taking advantage of your 20s uh, yeah. or your teens where it's like, hey, I'm never going to get this time back in my life. So I need to make sure that I am enjoying it. Yes. Do those responsible things. It's almost like brushing your teeth every night, right? Make sure you continue to brush your teeth. Make sure you save 10% or invest 10% or 15% or whatever you decide the number is. Uh, and just make sure that that's always happening. But with the other portions, make sure you're enjoying your life. Make sure you're taking yeah. care of the responsibilities, but also taking advantage of life right now. And I, I, I really like that message from, uh, from Bill, from Bill Perkins. Died, yeah. Died with zero. Love that. So kind of to wrap things up, what are your just general recommendations for college students or anyone that might be listening to this podcast? Uh, well, I'll, 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 I'll continue with the conversation we're having. Yeah. Start investing now, start yeah. investing now. And it's okay. You have, uh, if you're talking about retirement investing, you have, almost, what is it, five decades of investment growth. Yeah. And if you just plug those numbers into a compound interest calculator and see how insane it is, if you were to in start investing now and where that money grows, it is crazy. It, it just blows your mind. And I, 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 if you start now, you are going to have massive, massive wealth. But 
In the same sense, make sure you are budgeting an amount for fun and enjoying yourself. And then, so once you've set that money for investing, let it ride. Don't mess with it. Be like a dead person. Let it, let it go. Yes. <laughs> and over time, it is going to continue to grow. And by the time you're in your 60s, when you really need the money for retirement, when you're done with your uh, working journey, you're going to have piles and piles to be able to live on. But make sure you are uh, allocating some money for enjoyment because this is a, a, a very brief moment in your life and it's really important to enjoy it. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Andy, for joining us today. Really Absolutely. appreciate your insights. Thank you for having me, Vincent. Cool. If you like what you just heard, please like, comment, and share. This is Lance Mullen, producer of the MSU WMA podcast. MSU WMA or Michigan State University Wealth Management Association is a student organization part of the Eli Broad College of Business located in East Lansing, Michigan. Our mission is to inspire and educate the next generation of financial planners. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed, please check out our channel on all platforms such as Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And check out our social media at MSUWMA and MSUWMA.com. That concludes this season of the MSUWMA podcast. Thank you again for listening, and we will be back again this fall for season six, so stay tuned.